All right, welcome to another Creative TD production. Um, in this video, we are going to uh, take our custom lighting model to the next level, and we're going to start to actually produce um, lighting effects using textures, um, uh, such as a ramp, to actually um, produce our our end out end L colors. Right, because um, in this particular instance, if I remove this texture here, like that, um, because when we do the dot product uh, calculation, we actually get a value from one to negative one, right? So that would just represent white to black um, inside of uh, Photoshop, right? Or it's 255 to negative 255. All right, so we're just getting a, a grayscale range or a grayscale ramp, basically. So in Photoshop, if you were to, to actually map this out as a, a texture, a 2D texture or a ramp, uh, you would do something very similar to this. Right, so this is basically what we're looking at um, inside of Unity when it, we're doing just a straight up dot product and dot L function. Okay, so what we want to do is we actually want to give it some color. So if we, let's say we wanted to actually make the lighting model or the, the diffuse and dot L look something like this, like a gouache type rendering effect, um, we can. We can actually use the values that are being produced, the one to negative one, to actually pick a, a spot on this texture along this ramp by using the uh, the UVs of this texture okay and so let's get that set up inside of the shader so you guys can see how it all works let's do that so I'm gonna go into <clears throat> excuse me our, our custom diffuse lighting model here that we've uh, created and what I want to do is I actually want to feed in this ramp that we just made the squash ramp all right so I'm actually gonna save it into uh, my unity project okay what I want to do is I actually need to bring that into my shader so I can actually get access to that ramp. So I'm going to call it ramp and shading ramp and it's a type 2D and I'm just going to make it equal a default value of white for now. Okay, so that gets us a property set up in the inspector inside of Unity. Um, what I need to do is I need to pass this texture now into our CG program here into the subshader. So what I want to do here is <clears throat> uh, declare a sampler sampler 2D and it's going to be the same name ramp. All right, and then we can come down into our um, lighting model here, and what we need to do is insert a couple new statements um, to process the ramp into our n.l function. And it's really easy. Um, actually, for as a note too, um, previously I had this saturate uh, in the previous video. I had the saturate in there just to um, normalize out this value, but we don't need that anymore because we're actually going to do that manually inside of the shader with a little bit of math. Nothing scary, but it'll give us much more control over uh, how that ramp works. So um, let's do a half uh, diff. Call this a diffuse. I don't know. We just call it diff. And then we're going to say um, n dot l. We're going to multiply it by 0.5, and then we're going to add 0.5. Okay. And the reason why we're doing that is we're basically normalizing the range um, into zero to one. Okay. So if you had a, a value of negative one, we would multiply it by 0.5. You have negative 0.5, and then you add five or 0.5, and you have zero. Same for one. If you were to multiply it by 1, you get <clears throat> 0.5 by multiplying it by 0.5, and then you add another 0.5, and you get 1 back. All right, so now we've normalized it. So what we can do, right, because remember, in, in UV space, this will be 0 down here, and this will be 1 over here. Okay, so we want the light to actually map to this ramp. So it's 0 to 1. Okay, so we do that. And then what we want to do is feed these this value right here, this diff value, into the um, UVs of the texture that we're going to pull in here. Okay, so we're going to say half three because it's RGB. We're going to say ramp equals text two D. Give it the texture, and then give it uh, the UVs. And to do this, we need to declare uh, a float too because we need X and Y for the UVs. All right. And then we're going to feed it diff for both of those x and y variables, or components. 
and we're just going to pull out the RGB of that. <clears throat> okay, so that's all good. And now what we need to do down here is we need to feed it that new, because before we were just feeding it the uh, N.L, right? So we're just getting the raw 1 to negative 1. So what we want to do is now feed it the ramp, put that into here, so that the C variable, which is our final RGB color, is being fed the ramp color. Okay, so let's save that and just take a look. And we get a nice little error. So let's just take a look what we didn't do. Oh. Alright, this is supposed to be a float too. And yep, let's do that. There you go. So now, if we take a look at our, our um, sphere here, you can see that the ramp is actually being driven now by that 1 to negative 1 uh, range by the direction of the light. So now we can actually rotate the light and that ramp will just be remapped basically to the end out L. That's how you do that and that's how um, they produced uh, one of the components for the uh, Team Fortress 2 shader. It's a nice handy trick to get some really nice stylized effects. Uh, so let's say for instance let's actually go into um, Photoshop here and start to refine this. It's always nice when you're first starting out with these is just to get a base um, color so you just have one or two colors one for the shadow one for the light and then you can go in and start layering on other light effects so we can add a little bit of a, of a highlight maybe let's put this on a new layer so we can adjust the opacity of it let's bring that down maybe we want like a little kick kicker light down here actually how about we uh, put that on a different layer and play around with the colors too so we'll name this the kicker light this will be our main light right there so then for the kicker what I'm gonna do is colorize it give it a little bit of a blue just get dark like that we can also scale it like so and then let's give it a, little, a nice little warm a little darker warmish uh, core light I should probably do that with this one so I'll do something like that in a new layer all right so let's take a look to see what this looks like hit save go back to our model there you go so now we've got the the different colors in there and obviously we, we can uh, res these the texture up and down that'll control the actual resolution of your of your model uh, let me turn off the shadows so you can actually see the texture so you can see some of the banding here um, some of that can be fixed if we go into the textures actual setting uh, we go to the advanced setting here uh, you can turn off bitmaps for one that'll help and um, that'll pretty much let's just do a true color here apply that and there you go you lose some of that banding um, you can also just go back into Photoshop and make this actual ramp a little bit bigger but again you you that just um, needs to be weighed with your performance needs uh, in your game all right the, the size of that texture so there you go that is how you, you use a, a 2d ramp to actually produce a, a diffuse lighting uh, in the next video, we are going to cover the BRDF um, version of that, and BRDF actually uses a full square 2D texture, so something like 512 by 512, and um, it actually produces um, your facing light, your rim lights, um, your back lights, your N.L. There's a lot more information encoded, basically, into that one texture instead of it just being a straight N.L function. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed that uh, little session there. Um, in the next video, like I said, we will be covering the advanced version of this in the BRDF video. So I look forward to showing you guys. Thanks so much. Bye.